working with Microsoft Outlook, R. Craig Collins, Professional Development Coordinator, CIS Faculty, Temple College, Overview, Outlook Today, The Ribbon, Mail, Calendar, Contacts, Tasks, Notes, Rules, and just a bit about using Outlook with Exchange. If you're having trouble with Outlook, there is a better way. First off, there will be a PDF for you. So rather than taking notes right now, you might just focus on watching this presentation. A couple of tips for you. If you see a chevron, an arrow, a triangle, clicking that means you'll get more options. If you encounter a menu with the ellipsis, the dot, 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 that means a dialog box will open. Outlook Today. Outlook Today is a snapshot of your calendar, tasks, and messages. You can customize Outlook Today. If you can't find Outlook Today, too bad. Oh, you know I'll show you how to set up Outlook Today. We just need to get to the ribbon first. The ribbon. The ribbon is how you navigate the different tools that are in Microsoft products. I've opened up my copy of Outlook and 99 times out of 100 you'll want to be on the Home tab. Most of the good stuff is center left on the Home tab. Things that are a little further right are used less often. The further to the right you get on the ribbon moving from tab to tab the less frequently you will use these tools. So usually you want to stay on the Home tab. There is a great way to move through the ribbon and that's by rolling your mouse wheel. So if you just point at the center of the ribbon and roll the mouse wheel it will scroll through the individual tabs and if you recall all the good stuff is center left it might be very quick to find what you're looking for. But typically stay on the Home tab unless you have a need for something else. We can customize many aspects of the ribbon including the shortcut menu which is at the top left of Microsoft Outlook. This is where you could include Outlook today. At the top left is our quick access or shortcut menu. Right here is an arrow. Remember, arrows mean more options. So if I click this arrow, I can add more commands to this menu. Rather than popular commands, I could search for all commands and perhaps scroll down to find Outlook Today. And I could add it and choose OK. Now Outlook Today is on my quick access bar. When I click that, I can see what's on my calendar for today, if I have any outstanding tasks, and how much is going on in my inbox. And I can just click on the inbox when I'm ready to proceed. Don't forget, more commands. Next we're going to talk about the layout of your screen for just a bit. We already know we have the ribbon at the top and the quick access or shortcut toolbar to the very top left. Bottom left is where you have icons to choose from mail to the calendar, contacts, etc. The bottom right is where you can zoom in or zoom out. This layout can be changed on the view menu. On the view menu you can choose where the navigation pane is, where the reading pane is. You can also choose a compact view if you like. Again, on the View tab, you can place the navigation pane, you can control the reading pane, you can also change your views. Remember, arrows mean more options. Let's talk specifically about the Mail tool for a moment. By the way, if you're old enough to remember a five cent stamp, 
you'll need extra help learning how to use Outlook. That was a joke. You can laugh. Bottom left is the mail tool. Some basics that we need to cover. Send and receive. Carbon copy. Blind carbon copy. If you're expecting an email and it hasn't shown up, on the send and receive box, you can force it to send and receive all emails in the out box and check for new emails in the inbox. When you're composing a new email, you can click the to box to find someone whose name you wish to use, or Outlook recalls frequently used email addresses, making it very easy. CC is carbon copy. This is when you send an email to one person, but notify someone else that a conversation is occurring. If you choose CC, you can select the person's name and choose CC to add that person as a reader of the conversation. You'll also notice BCC is listed below. Mark Smith would understand that Glenda Barrett is getting a copy of the email. But people on the BCC line are not visible to the other recipients. If you're sending an email to everyone in your class, you should list the students in BCC so you are not giving away student email addresses to other students. Once you have your to and BCC or CC in place, you can click OK. You can also organize emails that you have received. You'll note that on the left, I have an extensive list of folders where I keep email that I have received but am not ready to delete yet. To create a new folder, you go to the Outlook menu, right-click, and choose a new folder. These will be listed alphabetically. By the way, you can put a folder in a folder. So you'll notice these folders are in this folder. Signatures. The easiest way to get to signatures is to be writing an email. I'll choose new email. If you maximize this window, you'll find the signatures link. Arrows mean more options, so you can create additional signatures. Remember, dot, dot, dot. The ellipsis means a dialog box will open. New or edit existing signature files. Search. What a great feature that so many people overlook when using mail. I can type in the name, what I think the subject line is, or some of the contents. I'll type in Mark, and it quickly starts sorting for mails that include Mark. If it can't find anything, it will actually prompt you to search the other folders besides the folder you are in right now. Let's take a moment to talk about spell check and autocorrect. Many of you will be using Microsoft Word indirectly as your editor, so you'll get the standard word cues that words have been misspelled. Right click any misspelled word to change that to a recommended word or add that word to your computer's dictionary. You'll also note autocorrect options. This allows you to replace commonly misspelled words with the correct spelling of the word. Let me demonstrate. I'll compose a new email. I'll type in A-S-L-O. I meant to type also, but I've misspelled it. If I do this on a regular basis, I'd like the computer to fix that word for me. Let me show you how to do an autocorrect. I can click on the question mark and type in auto correct to see if Outlook itself will help me. I choose auto correct. 
add a text entry to the autocorrect list. It says to go to the file tab, options, proofing, autocorrect. So I go to the file tab, options, click mail, then click spelling, autocorrect. Autocorrect options. A S L O. I want that to be replaced with A L S O. I click add. I click OK. I'll close up help. I'll start my email again. I A S L O and watch what happens when I press the space bar. It has been auto-corrected. Let's talk for a moment about attachments. If you are sending an email, you can choose Attach File and browse to the file that you wish to add to the email. You'll see it listed here to verify you've chosen the right file. I know we briefly spoke about Send and Receive, but let's get a little deeper. When you're typing an email, on the Options tab, not only can you set whether it's normal or high priority, you can also set some of these delivery options. We can also talk a little bit about cleanup. On the Folders tab, there's an item to clean up the folder. If you're not sure what it's going to do, you might want to manually go through and sort out which emails you wish to get rid of. Let's talk about the calendar. And we're not talking about the Mayan calendar. By the way, I was looking at my calendar and it starts with M T and then it goes W T F. Let's talk about creating an item on the calendar. First, select the calendar tool. If you wish to add an item, you can right click and choose to make your new appointment. Add a subject, a location, start and end times. You can even mark it all day. If it happens on a regular basis, you can set it up to run on your calendar weekly, monthly, or on particular dates. You can even categorize it to help you keep track of things. I use this red pay attention way too much. So you can see on my calendar for this week, I've categorized my office hours, class times, when I'm doing professional development, when I'm in committee meetings, and other campus events. Another way you can create a calendar item is to drag an email and drop it on the calendar. I'll just take this email that talks about when something is going to occur, drag it and drop it on the calendar icon, and then I can just set the date and time. The benefit of doing it this way is it keeps the email in the calendar item. Don't forget, you can add reoccurring or categorize all of your calendar events. Let's talk a little bit about contacts. Contacts. On the Home tab, you can choose to make a new contact or a new contact group. To make a group, all the members of the group have to already be in your contact list. Using a contact, you can search your contacts or click on the To button to find addresses. Managing is a little extra effort. I'm selecting contacts and you can scroll through alphabetically. When you get to a group, double click the group to see who's a member of the group. Double click an individual to add additional information. 
tasks. Creating a task. One of the easiest ways is drag an email to task, much as you did with the calendar. But you can also choose the tasks tool and create it the old fashioned way. I choose tasks and you can see I have a list of tasks here or I can create a new task. I can set when it starts and when it's due and by managing these dates it will sort particular tasks to the top of the list. But it's always a good feeling to lead it. A little bit about notes. I'll choose notes, choose new note. I'll type myself a note. Try to leave before five o'clock. Now you'll notice whenever I move any place else, that note can still be available to remind me of what I'm doing. This is getting into the more complex part. Rules and filters. The good news is there are wizards to help you. And I'm not talking about Gandalf. I'm talking about a program designed to ask you the important questions to help you create a rule. Again, this is a little more detailed. So if you're interested, read through these notes. If you'd like to save that for another day, press on. final topic I'd like to discuss just briefly is Exchange. Exchange is a mail server that adds functionality to groups that use Outlook. With Exchange you can share calendars, access emails anywhere via the web. You can delegate so a secretary or a co-worker can add things to your calendar or you can do live polls. Find out when everyone wants to meet, for example. This is the briefest of brief overviews, just to introduce you to the tasks and tools that can be performed with Outlook. If you have a question, don't hesitate to contact me.